legislation that brought them into being. And they've been breaking the law for many, many decades. Some of us need to be calculated for how, how, what percentage of their existence they've been breaking the law. Because you have to remember, they were given a mandate to collect foreign intelligence. So that was their mandate, electronic. And the world's a battlefield now. So their attitude is, we just collect it wherever we can get it. It doesn't matter what the constraints are. This kind of power, this kind of secret power, whether it's NSA, whether it's Department of Homeland Security, whether it's CIA, is not going to yield willingly, period. And that's what we have to take into consideration as we, the people. We have one last question. Last question. I hope this is here. Thanks. Hopefully, this is helpful. Um, I was talking to Greg yesterday about what he thought, of how he won as a team, and I heard court of public opinion came up, um, not just from Mr. Drake, but uh, Aaron Day got attacked. Did anybody hear Aaron Day speak? I've been attacked. Probably some of you in this room have. Can you guys, without letting the enemy know, is it possible to give a general overview of how you can use a court of public opinion? because I've felt it, I've had it, they've attacked me, my family, all of you have. Can you generally speak to that to help the group without giving out specifics? I know you've got to be careful they're listening to your tactics as well. The, yeah, thanks. no, I, I definitely can because I, I firmly believe that Tom Drake's case, to win that case, you had to win not only in the courtroom, but in the court of public opinion. And when you're dealing with the government, they have a giant megaphone with endless batteries and endless voices and that can reach everyone and every single day you hear the daily deluge of attacks on Snowden. Usually the same three that keep getting recycled but over and over and over again. But with Tom Drake's I had a strategy and he ended up getting within a short period of time the written hour price for truth telling even though he was being charged with making false statements Every time he was mentioned in the news, I had to say, Tom Drake, winner of the written hour prize for truth telling, is really just making false statements. And I said that you see how this works. And um, then I mean, a long form investigative article by Jay Mayer, who's among the five or so journalists in this country that I actually trust fully. Um, and and then a piece on 60 Minutes. And I think those things were critical to really helping completely collapse the criminal case. Um, with John's, where John was also getting a lot of positive media, it was not, John was in a different district than John. John was in the most conservative district in the entire nation, in the Eastern District of Virginia, whereas Tom was in Maryland. And in John's case, he had a different set of attorneys and we were doing the public media campaign and it was working. Um, John had other considerations, namely being out in time enough that maybe his one-year-old wouldn't remember that he was away. Um, maybe he would be able to get back to his family at the earliest possible moment because he has three kids under the age of eight to raise and his wife Heather is doing that alone. She was also pushed out of the CIA uh, for no reason other than that John uh, you know, had, was going through this. So for a while they were on food stamps and doing everything they could to, to hold it together. Um, so I, yeah, there are different reasons people plea bargain and we shouldn't see that as a sign of weakness, but um, sort of lost my hand. <laughs> well, so, I, I mean, I'll say that, that public opinion matters in ways that you think it would and that you wouldn't think it would. Number one, you have to remember when Edward Snowden came out with these disclosures, even the first couple weeks, Congress didn't really care. Uh, they uh, kind of either ignored it or said they knew about it and it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't until three or four weeks later when the opinion polls started coming out that they saw that voters cared, that they all of a sudden did a 180, and now all of a sudden this is one of their most important issues. So by showing your support for Edward Snowden and opposing the NSA, uh, you are likely to change the opinions of uh, the people that matter most in Congress. Uh, number two, you also uh, 
uh, change the opinions of people who aren't supposed to um, even pay attention to public opinion in the first place, judges. Multiple judges now in both Freedom of Information Act cases, FISA, secret FISA court judges, and a federal court judge in uh, a case challenging the NSA have uh, pointed to the strong uh, public debate that is going on and how it was healthy for the country and that's why they are addressing this issue. That's why they are making the orders that they do. Uh, so both in uh, you know the, the government which represents us and the government which is supposed to oversee those representatives, public opinion is, is huge. I'll just say this. I would not be sitting here on this stage in front of you. It wasn't for the extraordinary woman to my left. She was my voice when I had none. She got what was at stake in this country and for myself and no one else did. I consider her also a pioneering post 9 11 whistleblower. She had no one to go to. There was no one to go to when she blew the whistle. And so just to acknowledge her now, because she has dedicated her professional life defending people like myself, John Kiriakou, and others she can't even talk about to this day who have come forward in the public interest. Because they know there's far more at stake in this country. Right? There's kind of secrets from the public.